There's no one around that I can see. Just you and me. And it's so nice to be in good company. Hey, my name's Scott Bowling. I'm here with Kurt Thomas. Um, Kurt Thomas is an award-winning singer-songwriter. He won CMT's Music City Madness and Kenny Chesney's Next Big Star. He's opened up for several people, including Zach Brown Band, Darius Rucker, Leonard Skinner, and a ton of other people. <laughs> you know, uh, he also wrote with Dennis Morgan in Nashville, who's wrote over 20 number one hits. So, what was it like meeting Dennis Morgan, man? Oh, man, Dennis was so cool. I mean, anytime you write with some of these big writers, you know, it's... Uh... They can be a little bit strange. You know, mm -hmm. all creatives, God knows I can get my weird on at times. But, <laughs> but, man, he, but Dennis was so cool, and I wrote a lot of the songs off my Give It Hell Trine. Did you? Album with, with Dennis. What and, songs you write with Dennis? Uh, I wrote Give It Hell Trine, the title track. I wrote uh, Give You My Coat. Nice. And uh, wrote, Lord of Mercy, Love and Elvis, which okay. is one of my favorite songs because I'm a huge Elvis freak. So you would travel to Nashville and stay, where would you stay at in Nashville? Oh, uh, a lot of times I stay in hotels. I got several buddies up there, live up there. and uh, th But that's the thing, man. Whenever you travel to Nashville, it's whenever you live in Georgia, mm -hmm. you're like, you make that four hour drive up there. And whenever you do it, you're like, man, I, I hope I get me a good song today because you don't want to travel four hours yeah. and come home but nothing good. So you're like, <laughs> you really put your thinking cap on on the way up there and like, man, I got to write a good song, got to write a good song today. And, uh, you know, Dennis was always so cool about, hey, man, uh, what you got in mind? I'll tell him. He's like, well, what about this? And then he'd start doing some really cool stuff. And he's oh, an amazing awesome. guitar player. And <laughs> just keeping him focused is, I mean, is kind of a trick in its own because, like, he'll, you'll be in the middle of writing a song and he'll be like, let me tell you about the time I wrote, wrote or not wrote, but uh, the time I met Bob Dylan. And, you're, and then <laughs> you'll be on a story for like an hour and you're like, okay, come back to me, Dennis. Because, yeah. you know, but, but he's so cool. He's such a good guy. That's very, awesome, very good friend. So how did you learn? When did you realize you could write and record? Uh, I mean, you know, write a song. Writing, honestly, for me, it's, it's one of those things where the more you do it, mm -hmm. you know, you get better at it. And right on. the key is just... You gotta stink for a while. I mean, yeah, and like the first song I ever wrote was called Come Back to Me, as off Kurt mm. Thompson's Small Town Band album. Mm. And it was just, I mean, I go back and listen to some of those songs now and I cringe. I'm like, oh, God, <laughs> that was so bad, so bad. But, but you know, I think every writer needs to go through those years of trying to create their craft, you know, and just trying to become a better writer. And, right. and whenever I was recording that Small Town Band album, I met Lee Davis, my mm. producer at the time, and he was just, he was kind of the one that helped shape me into next the level. Yes, I mean, like I, I wanted to impress him all the time. I was like, mm -hmm. no. I'd go home, write a song, a couple songs a week, bring them back to him. Most of the mm -hmm. time, he'd be like, no, go back. And, and this is why you were in the small town band. Yes, yes. And, Who was uh, in the small town band? Just oh man, it was me, Dwayne Pinion, my brother, Kevin oh, Thomas. Oh, cool. That's cool. Uh, Louis David. Uh, I mean, the the members were constantly mm -hmm. changing over. Uh, Ryan Simmons, uh, Jamie Moss. I mean, we. We all had such a good time, and it, like every picture, if you go back and look at all the newspaper <laughs> articles, the right. band was different every every time. But I had my, <laughs> my core guys that were just, they always stood by me, and I'll still pull them up on stage oh, that's cool. if they come out to a show. How long does it take you to write that many songs? You know, you have oh, you know, 10, 12 songs oh. each. Oh, the best songs are the ones that come fast. Okay. But they, I wish they come more often like that. You know, they come faster now than what they did then, but... Mm. Like back in Georgia, mm -hmm. that was kind of people's favorite off that one. It was the one that stunk the least. Right. But uh, that's a good song, man. Off that, thank you. It's the me. only one I know, brother. <laughs> off that album. I appreciate that. <laughs> but anyway, it was like, you know, a lot of the best songs, they'll come in like 10, 15 minutes. Mm. You got to love those. But when did you decide to drop the Small Town Band? Was it because of well, Lee Davis when he well, told you to yeah, go he, on? Yeah, I wanted to record that first album with the Small Town Band. Mm -hmm. I mean, we played all the bars together and stuff like that and you know but Lee he approached me about doing a solo record and he was just like let me bring in some some of his own guys yeah some studio musicians like nice. Mike Hines Mike Steele and all these guys who play for like Corey Smith now mm, and, that's cool. and stuff like that and he he brought him in and man it was just a whirlwind it was just like wow was that a big guys. transition when you told oh, your yeah. guys from small town band you're like look it, it was a little tough I mean at it? first but they all in all they supported me I mean mm. they were like Kurt's 
curse the one out writing the songs, you know, you know, and stuff like that. So let him do it. And, and they were so cool and supportive. Nice. They always have been supportive. So you wrote that song, uh, Love Might Be Blind, But It Sure Found Me. That's an awesome song, man. Oh, thank you. Bro. I love it. I love the catchiness of your little, your, the song phrases on that. Um, oh, yeah. I, I, I was listening to a lot of uh, Tim McGraw oh, at the time that I wrote that song. <laughs> nice. And that song uh, came out, uh, uh, what was it called? Uh, Had a barbecue state of a what? T-shirt. Uh, something like that. that yes. Was it. Something like that. And I was like, I want to write a real upbeat, catchy song like that. And, I went home and I was like, I want to write about that first date experience, you know, because mm -hmm. I, I could never grow facial hair very well and <laughs> right stuff like that. You know, that awkwardness of going out on that first date. When's the last time you played that song? Oh, it has been at least a good five, six years. Well, brother, let's do it. Let's do it. Let's play it. Let's do it. <laughs> right. Must have combed my hair about a thousand times. The words that I'm gonna say keep running through my mind Shave both the whiskers off my chin I got the old man's keys and I comb my hair again Well I won't up on a front steps to meet her The sweet 16 has never looked any sweeter mm. My heart was pounding and my body began to shake Well, I never knew anything And ever feel this way But in one moment I was swept right on my feet Yeah, well Love might be blind But it sure found me Well, I Love might be blind But it sure found me Well, I said Love might be blind But it sure found me So after Enjoy the Ride, you did your second album, Turn Up the Radio. How long did it take between albums? Oh man, we we had kind of already started going into Turn Up the Radio. Oh really? As soon as before even Enjoy the Ride even got produced and we could, you know, put it out there to sell. Because Lee enjoyed making that record so much and he was just like I can he's like, I can do better and he'd heard that song I wrote, The Effect is Love. And that was the first song I wrote off Turn Up the Radio and mm -hmm. And he loved it. It was really cute. You know, it was about a boy being in, you know, science class in eighth grade and sees that girl walk into the room. A lot of my stuff at that age, you know, or at that time period, a lot of young people's songs is because I was young at the time. You know, it was... So when you write that that song now, do you do you think back when you were young or did you write that song a long time ago? Oh, I wrote it a back? long, long time ago. Oh, wow. Yeah, and it was just... You know, it, it was a neat little song that I wrote, uh, Happily Ever After, then Daddy's Girl, and those were the songs off the record that people loved, you know, and, and it was really cool. Yeah. What was it like writing Daddy's Girl? Because obviously, at the time, you didn't have any kids or anything. No, so. no, no. I wrote it for a friend of mine. I worked at a place called Trenton Technology, and uh, uh, it was a computer company, and a, my buddy Chuck Henson was back there telling me about his... Uh, uh, this guy that would come and pick his daughter up for dates and how he'd be cleaning the shotgun and stuff like that and, and I was like I'm gonna write this song to make him laugh and feel better and I wrote the song and I took him out there and a couple other guys from Trenton and I let them listen to it and uh, and man they were just like man that's a great song I was like thank you guys and, and still to this day it you know whenever I do it live it sells at least you know, a few copies of that record for me. Absolutely. You Do know. people still request that song oh, to yeah. this day? Oh yeah, absolutely. That's Especially awesome. like, and people will get me to record it for them, like who's, they want to play it for their daughter or their mm -hmm. son-in-law or, or somebody like that, you know. When you wrote uh, Happily Ever After, what's that song about? Did you just write it one day? Or I did just it take wrote a while? It. I, it. It was one of those that just came out of nowhere. <laughs> it was, you know, there was no, it's a cool story. It is. But it, but it, it never actually really happened to me, but I thought it would be cool if it had, you know, it was just, it's about that boy who, the girl dumps him and then he shows back up at a party with this hotter girl, and he's <laughs> right. like, ha ha ha, and She's face. the one you're looking at. Like, it, it, yeah. Exactly, that kind of thing. Yeah, a lot of my songs, though, if you go back and listen to the, to the old records, and a lot of them sound very, like, for younger people, and that's because mm -hmm. I was young at the time, right. you know, like, if you listen to Give It Hell Try, and then you go back and listen to like enjoy the ride you're like man he's not a kid anymore <laughs> you know and he still might act like a kid sometimes but he's like but he's, he's not a kid anymore and it's just you know life throws you like as soon as I finished turn up the radio and then I did six strings in a prayer and I was like all right that's it I'm probably out I, mm -hmm. I mean as a songwriter I shouldn't say that because the songs they, keep, they do keep coming but you know I always doubt myself I'm like all right that's it I probably ain't gonna have no more 
great songs, but then, then, then I ended up having children, and then it's like, it's like material presents itself, and you're like, oh, I'm gonna start writing about them, I'm gonna write about my wife, and all this stuff. So when you went to your third album now, um, how long of a gap was that between Turn Up the Radio and Six Strings in the Prayer? That was, was that a long that, gap? That was a long gap. Yeah, was that was, and uh, you had kids between Well, I had gotten gap. married and we moved to Greensboro, North Carolina oh, okay. for a little while. And uh, we did a little tour out in Texas whenever we put out Turn Up the Radio. And, uh, you know, we got done with the tour and I was living the family life for a while, enjoying being married, and then uh, went back to Lee one day and he was like, let's He's like, you got any songs? I was like, yeah, I got like 20 of them. And then, wow. So we sat down, picked out our favorites, and wow. did that record. And then whenever, then there was an even bigger gap, you know, like a 10 year gap between that and Give It Hell Try, right. which I finally got to do. It was always my dream to do a record in Nashville. Mm -hmm. And I got to do Give It Hell Try in Nashville. I kind of want to go all the way back to your very first uh, Kurt Thomas in the Small Town Band and back in Georgia. Uh, I remember uh, you actually gave my uh, father a copy of this, and he gave it to me and goes, man, this guy reminds me of you, he's silly, you know, he's oh, funny, yes. and uh, I thought that was really cool. But uh, <laughs> back in Georgia, man, that sounds like a classic. Let oh, me ask you a question first. Would you ever consider re-recording that song? Like you did Kickback, I, I you know, would, back in Georgia. That would be awesome. I would love to, just for the sentimental value of it. That was the first. Right. I'd written about six or seven songs before I wrote Back mm -hmm. in Georgia, but that was the first one that people actually paid attention to. Oh, you know, it? whenever you're playing those first songs, you know, you're out there playing in the coffee houses and like Coffee House in Dahlonega, Penny University in Gainesville, yeah. and stuff like that. And you play like some of those first ones you wrote, you mm -hmm. can see people just over there. Did you they have start talking to each other, but back in Georgia, they would actually pay attention. I was like, okay, I might have some. When you played back in those small places in Dahlonega, did you take your whole band? Was it like the brother, oh, yeah. drummer? Oh yeah, absolutely. And, I, and I playing with your brother must have been awesome, man. Oh, it was great, and he's always been so supportive of me. And like, man, we, we have like a 10-piece band on a stage the size of this bar. <laughs> I mean, because they'd be like, I want to play with you. I mean, I'm sure, come on, let's go play. <laughs> You know, we had That's a great awesome. time though, man. Some of my favorite memories are definitely with us. Well, do you want to play back in Georgia? Let's do that. Let's do it. The city life, guess it finally got the best of me. Cause I can't take it anymore. I want to go back, but the sky's clear and the grass is green. And the auto locks so many doors. Amazing grace fills the air And the hearts of every man around I want to go back To a place where I can lay my head And I can finally unwound Back in Georgia In that small town In that small town When you did Give It Hell Trying, that's when you first did your like music, start doing your music videos. What was it like doing your, uh, you did Kickback, right? That was your first one, right? Yes, yes. I uh, did that with uh, Dustin Blake at Root Down Studios. Mm. And man, he, he he did such a cool job. Yeah, he made it real easy for me, you know, okay. because honestly, whenever you do videos, mm -hmm. I'm not sure if everybody knows this, but you, you lip sync to your record. <laughs> and right man, on. that was so nerve wracking for me because we had a big <laughs> crowd of people that I didn't even know. Oh, they okay. were all from Adairsville. Uh, the girl who works with us, Hannah Gordon, uh, all of her friends, she called them over there and they all showed up and jumped out of the trucks and they're all dancing. In the Whose video. concept was that? Was that yours? Or I, you like... That was Dustin's. Okay, Dustin. So he, he got the storyline. Yeah, what's he, got the, he, got, he had all the ideas and told me about it and I was excited to do it, you know. And, but it was so nerve wracking, and like in the video, you see me drinking that Jack. It yeah. started is off. Is that real Jack? Or man, what? It started off as sweet tea, but, <laughs> but it ended up being Jack because I was just so nervous. I was like, I don't, I don't like. I can sit there and sing in front of people, twenty thousand people. It don't even bother me. But you ask me to lip sync. I'm, I'm not a, I'm not a lip singer. It's not my thing. And. I'm over there like having to lip sync to these songs and I'm like, oh, I feel like an idiot. Was it a long day? But the, you, the, the more up? Jack, it was like, oh, let's have some fun. Let's have some fun. Let's nice. do this. Nice. Um, when you on the album, I noticed you have a song called about Elvis. You wrote a whole song about Elvis. What is your love with Elvis? Oh, man, I love Elvis. Love Elvis. You're like, I got to write a song about Elvis. Oh, man. Well, usually 
if you're into music, somebody will ask you eventually, are you a Beatles man or are you an Elvis man? Yes. I, and all my life I've been an Elvis man. I, I, I love the Beatles, don't get me wrong. I love them. I, I think they're... What deep. about Rolling Stones? Because I've always I love the Stones. Mystery. I've seen them twice. They're okay. incredible. But, uh, but as far as like the Beatles and Elvis, man, it was like Elvis was so cool. I mean, like, yeah, his his styles and stuff of clothes he wore, like, they're not in style today. But as far as just a cool guy who could hold right. an audience in the palm of his hand, nobody could. And do I, that I like, like how Elvis. you write the song because you you write it. And you correct me if I'm wrong, but you write it almost like you were there, and you're like, like you know. Well, you were there in the t- like you're almost writing about someone else. Oh like, yeah, and, like, I, and I, was I wrote there it and got to witness it. Oh yeah, well I wrote it with Dennis Morgan. Who Dennis was, Morgan, who wrote and, all the hits, and he years. actually you know he was at Elvis's funeral. Wow, and stuff like that. God, and you know he and he was around Nashville that. whenever Elvis was still alive, you know, and oh, playing shows, and he got to see Elvis and stuff like mm-hmm. that. So it was good having Dennis with me. Wow, while that was happening. But uh, I'll always be an Elvis fanatic, man. I love <laughs> Elvis. I just think he's cool. My yeah. last question uh, off of uh, Give a Hell Trying would be Fishing. Man, that song oh, is yeah. amazing. And, and, uh, and God rest, uh, you know, Tommy, your father. Um, but that song is amazing. Oh, you know? thank you. And, uh, thank you. It truly gives me chill bumps just listening to it. And just seeing how you've grown from being Kurt Thomas in the Small Town Band. And, and each album gets better and you write oh, better and you write you. better. And you live, you leave... Give a hell trying with fishing. And it's like, man, dude. Well, I mean, I, I how did, can you talk that? Well, like, I, I, yeah, I know. Well, well, I dedicated that song to my dad and my brother because, I mean, I went with them several times. It, every opening day of trout season, we'd go to Dockery Lake. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, I quit going after a while, but my dad and my brother, they always did that up until the day that dad died. And, mm-hmm. you know, that was something special they always had. And, you know, me, I, I was kind of a kind of a dreamy, creative kid. You know, I'd be writing stories or making up movies with my little toys and stuff mm-hmm. like that. That was my thing. And, you know, I just, I was, I was born kind of creative, but, you know, I wanted to give them something that they, you know, a tribute to them too, you know, and, yeah. you know, I still listen to it and I still, you know, start crying every time I listen to it. You know? What and was that like sending that to your brother and your mom and oh, your man. family? Be like, was, that's like your gift to them. You're like, oh, you know, yeah, dad did so much for us. Here you go, man. Just, well, I think there's, I mean, that's one of the greatest gifts you can give anybody as a song because, it's your heart poured into that, you know. Mm-hmm. Just like, you know, even even you, you've had a couple of couple of children, yeah, uh, Knox and Savannah, and right. and I wrote them both songs whenever yeah, they were did, born, man. I mean, because you mean so much to yeah, me, and, and I'm like, that's a given. The gift of a song is something that's you know truly special. Amen. So it's amazing. So now what you're doing now is you got, um, I guess you still have Give It Hell Trying. Um, you also have your own Moonshine, which is awesome. Oh yes. <laughs> it's a, a it's pecan pie, pecan pie made by local choice out of Charleston, South Carolina. How'd you pick the flavor, man? Uh, they sent me that was the best part. They sent me uh, tons and tons of <laughs> flavors of moonshine. You're and like, and the I, whole way through. I'd invite buddies. I'd invite buddies <laughs> over and like, all right, guys, come over here, and we'd all sit there and sample the moonshines. They're like, oh. and at the beginning, you're like, oh, this one's good, and this one, man, it's okay. This one's great, and by the end, you're like, they're all good, man. They're wonderful. Let's just blend them all together, you know, but but we had a great time doing that. So. That's awesome, man. Uh, kind of going back, uh, and I don't know where this lands, but uh, you wrote some songs with Barry Waldron, and, yeah. uh, and I love that guy because I've seen him before with He's Zach Brown Band. Amazing picker. Amazing. Long hair. He, what band was he in, by the way? He was in Alabama. Uh, uh, Rolling in the Hay. Rolling in the Rolling Hay. In the hay. Alabama, oh, man. yeah, man. But they played all over Alabama a lot. They oh, played okay, everywhere. Okay. But a huge college cult following. Mm. And, and and he's out there still playing today, uh, playing with a girl named uh, Jennifer, and they are just tearing it up right now. Awesome. And uh, and you guys wrote a song called The Toast, right? The Toast, yeah. That, that actually happened. That is an awesome happened. song, man. He, he came to me, and, uh, and it was whenever, it was another one of those things. We were playing a bar that night, and he came to me, and he was just like, man, uh, I was reading the paper today, and I saw where my, my ex is getting married. Right. And I was like, huh. So I went home and, and I was like, huh. you, I was like, do you mind if I take your story and go home and write a song about it? He's like, go ahead. And I uh, went home and took that story and wrote Would you ever song. put that on an album in the oh, future? Oh, I'd love to. That's Absolutely. Because awesome. I love the story of it, man. It's a great song. So give a hell trying. You wrote a song called Sweet and the video to Sweet is awesome, man. Uh, uh, talk about you. that a little bit. Well, it was really, uh, you know, whenever Dustin came to me and was like, I want to, he, he saw us performing at uh, uh, Drew Tutton's farm and it was you know one of those fourth of july outdoor parties and he saw it and it he heard me play sweet and it was written by my friend jay drummonds mm-hmm. uh, who's one of my all-time heroes 
and it was whenever he mentioned the video it, it, he talked about just making it like a tribute to my life with music and with my family all four of my kids and my beautiful wife and just turning it and do, filming them and all this stuff and I was like oh man I gotta do that so and, and it turned out to probably be my favorite video of all and it, oh, and it cool. did the best as I far it, as man. like it, on Facebook, uh, YouTube, and all that stuff. Yes. It got tons of hits, and everybody. And who crazy. did that video again? Who, uh, Dustin Blake. Okay, Rick so Down he Studios. did your other videos. Yes, nice. yes, he did. I mean, and it was just an incredible video. Oh, and I love it. I man. loved it. One of my favorite songs. My baby girl sings sweet songs to me. And my youngest boy throws the ball, says, Daddy, go deep. And my oldest two sons, they're so cool. But when I tell them, they just roll their eyes in me. Now, Mama, she still looks good in a pair of jeans. Even after four kids, she still gets to me. And I come from a little bitty town with a big old dream. And it makes all this pretty sweet My life is sweet Yeah, my life is sweet Well, sugar ain't got a thing on me And my life is sweet Well, I even on a bad day when everything goes wrong I could take comfort in the fact that Before long I'll be driving myself To the place that I call home Sweet home Where my life is sweet I wake up most days saying pinch me I don't know why the Lord has chose to bless me. All I can do is just say thank you for a life that's sweet. Sweet, yeah, my life is sweet. Well, sugar ain't got a thing on me. Yeah, won't you go ahead and pour a little more honey on my biscuit, please? Yeah, put a little bit of sugar in my tea. Yeah, the Lord's been good, sure been good to me. And my life is, uh-huh, uh-huh, uh-huh. I kind of want to ask you a couple more questions on giving out trying because like I said you you've had so many great songs off this album um, so glad I did this can you talk about that just for just briefly so glad I did this was really neat because I'm a stay-at-home father by day and uh, all my kids are begging me to take them to Stevie B's which is kind of like Chuck E. Cheese and they they were begging me to take them over there I was like oh man this is gonna be rough this is gonna be rough and but I'm a, I've always been a softy, and I threw all four of them in the car, and we drive over to Stevie B's, and everything went great. They didn't ask us to leave like they normally do, and you know, and it was just, I got back in the car, I was like, man, I'm so glad I did this. And it got me thinking, like, most of the things that we dread in life, you know, we're like just dreading. And we end up being glad we did them after it was over, you know, so it, it was just, that's kind of, and I called up Jay, I was like, come help me write this song. It's going to be great. He was like, I'll be down tomorrow. And I called him back in 10 minutes. I was like, sorry, brother. I just wrote, I wrote the whole thing, man. And he was what's, like, no, that's great. What's funny about this album is that, and, and your last album too, is that your songs uh, genuinely talk about like love a lot. And, and this know. album is, and this and your last album is a lot about kids. And I yeah. love that. Like like that song you did, That's My Boy. That's oh, a great song, man. Talk right, about that you, one. Or you're right what you know. It, well, as I said before, I'm a stay-at-home dad. And uh, Van, he has a, my little boy Van, he has a hint of autism. Mm. And uh, I mean, he was really tough. Uh, as, a, as a little child he's and honestly he's he's grown up and he's he's doing so good he goes to public school now and he's doing so great his grades are great and I mean just 
I mean, he's a wonderful, wonderful child. And he kind of grew out of it. And, you know, and, and it's just, but at that time, that was a rough period, man. I mean, I it was just, you're, you're so ready to pull your hair out all the time. It's like you, anywhere you go, they put, he throws a fit. You do this, he throws a fit. Or he's running around doing stuff he's not supposed to, you know. And which, which is your typical child, but right. if you have a child with a hint of autism, it yes. tends to be magnified times ten. Right. You know. So, but you know, I, I love the song. That's my boy, and I, I try to play it at every show I do, just mm-hmm. because you know it's that part of my life. Mm-hmm. You know, I love looking back on it. You know, and, and I'm so glad I, I had to go through it because you know it's the reward's always better in the end. Yeah, so. Absolutely. The last question I ask you about this: back in the day. Let me, let me ask you this question. Back in the day, it's at the end of the album. It's like almost the closure. I mean, it's like the second to last song. I'm like, man, you save like the gold to the very, very <laughs> end, man. Usually like people like the best kind of, but Back in the Day is a great song, man. Well, uh, I love Talk about that. that for well, me. I wrote that with Jay, and uh, he was coming down to Atlanta, and uh, he was coming from Cashers, North Carolina, and he'd come down, and he wrote Back in the Day, and I had, Jay, like I said, he was one of my heroes. Me and Zach Brown, we used to open up for mm-hmm. Jay at the Holly, Way back in the day. Really? Back in the day. And, and, <laughs> was and, this back in the small town band? Yeah. Well, it was okay. before small town. Oh, wow. And uh, what you call it, me and Zach, we used to open up for him. And and what you call it, whenever I met up with Jay again, I was mm-hmm. opening up for Sean Mullins at the Crimson Moon. And Jay showed up. And Jay wasn't really writing much anymore. He never played out anymore. And I kind of helped get him back into the music again. And, mm-hmm. uh, and I helped him start writing again and playing out shows. And now he's playing all the time. <laughs> And, uh, you know, and I, I'm kind of proud of myself for getting him back in because he's such a wonderful talent. And what you call it, we sat down and wrote that song, and it was like that was kind of his come back into yes, writing back. again because he was just so proud of that song, and so was I. Yeah. I was like, and he ended up recording it. And on you his, guessed on it, and we yeah, did record it, too. Yes, I, so. I love singing on his record. With him, well, so. Kurt, I appreciate you being here, man. No, thank you for the interview. Thank you. Yeah. Thank it's been I awesome. missed it for the one. Awesome, brother. Thank you, my boy. Love you. <laughs> Getting back with a bottle of Jack and watch the world go by. Just a bowl swing and a six string and a Tennessee whiskey high. I'm gonna save my worries for another day. Today I'm satisfied. Just a kick back with a bottle of Jack and watch the world go by. I got supper cooking up in the kitchen. Country music on the ready hole. Not a cloud in the sky, oh my, my, feel a good buzz coming on. I've been working all week in the city, and I think I deserve a break. Gonna kick off the working shoes I'm wearing and have a little fun today. I'm gonna kick back with a bottle of Jack and watch the world go by. Just a full swing, and a six string, and a Tennessee whiskey high. I'm gonna save my worries for another day. Today I'm satisfied. Just a kick back with a bottle of Jack. Watch the world go by. Yes, some are gonna kick back with a bottle of Jack. Watch the world go by.